Hello, my good friends. My name is TTJ KFC Richard, and welcome to my online tutorials. Our discussion on numerical and computational method will be on numerical integration. The last time we said that when we talk of numerical integration, then we are talking about the trapezium rule, Simpson's one third rule, and Simpson's three uh, three eighth rule. Please check out my videos on Simpson's uh, three eighth rule and the trapezium rule. So in this video, we'll be talking about Simpson's one third rule. So refer the video, and I will tell you how the Simpson's one third rule comes about. Then we solve some sample questions by finding the area of value or evaluating finite integrals using Simpson's one third rule. This will be a very interesting engagement, so please come along. So with the Simpson's one third rule, if we are asked to evaluate the integral span from a to b of the function f of s dx and haven't gotten the values of x to be x0, x1, x2, x3, x4 up to the last value of s which is x net, x n and there are corresponding values of y that are substituting the x values into the function f of x or we get y0, y1, y2, y3, y4 up to the last value of y which is y n then the Simpson one third rule is saying that our integral spanning from a to b of the function f of x dx will be equal to one third h bracket the first value of the y which is y naught plus the last value which is y n then plus four times all odd values of what of y or all values of y that are in odd positions thus y1 plus y3 then plus y5 in the order then plus two times all values of y that are in even positions even position thus y2 plus y4 plus y6 in the order I hope you get that. However, the Simpson's one third rule can only be used if the n, which is the number of vertices or the number of trapezio, is even. If it is not even, the Simpson's one third rule becomes very uh, deficient. So remember, our h is giving us the b minus a all over n, where the n is the number of vertices. So if the number of vertices is even, then we can use the Simpson one third rule. If it is not, then the Simpson one third rule become deficient. So now we take some sample questions and see how we can evaluate the finite integrals using Simpson one third rule. So our first example says that using Simpson one third rule to evaluate the integral spanning from one to five of the function one over x plus two ds with four vertices correct to three decimal places. So remember when we meet, when we are doing numerical integration, the first thing we need to find is the interval of difference, which is the h. And the same thing for Ontario can only be used if the number of vertices is even. So you can see that four is even. So we can use the same thing for Ontario here. So we'll find our h. Our h is b minus a all over n where our b is 5, our a is 1, b is 5, all over n, which is the number of vertices, 4. 5 minus 1 is 4 over 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. That means the interval of difference is 1. That means the values of the x are 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 5. So we'll construct a table value for the x. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we substitute into the function y equal to 1 over x plus 2 to get the corresponding values of y. So when we substitute 1 in here, we get 0 0.33. We substitute to 0 0.250. We substitute 3, we get 2, 0 0.2. And we substitute 4, we get 1.67. When we substitute 5, we get 0 0.143. And what does Simpson one third rule is saying? It says that the integral of the function 1 to 5. Uh, the integral span from 1 to 5 of the function 1 all over 1 plus 2 dx 
will be equal to um, one third h of y naught plus y one uh, plus y n then plus four times all the values of y in all position that's y one plus y three in the order then plus two all the values of y in even positions that's y2 plus y4 in the order i hope you get that remember this is our y naught our y1 y2 y3 and this becomes our yn which is the last value then we can say the this function then this the integral span from 1 to 5 of 1 over x plus 2 ds will be 1 third and our h is 1 of the function y naught which is 0 0.333 plus y n which is 0 0.143 then plus 4 times all the values of y in odd position that's the first one here is 0 0.250 then we have 0 0.167 then plus 2 all the values of y in even position and we will have only one that's 0 0.200 so we add 0 0.250 to 0 0.167 we get 0 0.417 times our 4 remember and plus 2 times 0 0.200 so our 0 0.476 4 times 0 0.417 will give us 1.668. Then 2 times 0 0.200 will be 0 0.400. And we add 0 0.46, 0 0.476 to 0, 1.668 plus 1, uh, 0 0.400 will get 2.544. Then 1 third times 2.544 will be 0 0.848. Then we can say the integral span from 1 to 5 of 1 all over x plus 1 dx using Simpson's one third row will be equal to 0 0.848 correct to three decimal places i hope you get that so our second example says that use Simpson's one third rule with five ordinates to find an approximation to the integral span from 1 to 3 of 1 all over the square root of 1 plus x cubed ds giving your answer to three significant figures. So, how do we do this? Remember, the Simpsons one third rule can only be used if the number of vertices or trapezium is even. And remember, the number of, the number of vertices The number of vertices will be equal to the number of number of ordinates number of ordinates minus one so when we, when we subtract one from the number of ordinates it is even that means we can use the same series one table so we can the number of vertices which is the n is equal to the number of ordinates is five so five minus one and that will give us four since 4 is even, we can use the same thing for interval. So we need to find the interval of difference, which is h. It is equal to b minus a over the number of vertices or trapezium. Pass our b in this case. Our b is 3 and our a is 1 over the number of vertices, which is 4. 3 minus 1 is 2 over 4. four divided, 2 divided by 4 is half or 0 0.5 so our interval of difference will be 0 0.5 that means we, we we start the values of x from 1 to 3 with the interval of 0 0.5 so we have the values of x on the table line is 1 1.5 2 2.5 and the last one will be 3 when we substitute the values of x into this function 1 all over the square root of 1 plus x cube these are the corresponding values of the functions and that will become y and what does seem if one third rule is seen so remember this is our y naught y1 
y2, y3, and this will be our yn. The sin sin for one third rule is saying that our integral spanning from 1 to 3 of that function 1 all over the square root of 1 plus x squared dx will be equal to 1 third h then times our y naught plus our y n then plus 4 times all the values of y in even in odd position that's y1 plus y3 in this case then plus 2 all the values of y in even position and the only value there is y2 i hope you get that so we have this to be equal to one third our h remember is 0 0.5 so times our y naught which is 0 0.7071 plus our yn which is 1.0.1889 then plus 4 times our y1 which is 0 0.4780 then plus our y3 which is 0 0.2452 0 0.2452 then plus 2 times y2 and y2 is 0. 3, 3, 3, 3. I hope you hear that. So when we add 0 0.4780 to 0 0.2452, we are going to get the 0 0.7232 and 0 0.7071 plus 0 0.1889 will give us 0.896. So 4 times 0 0.7232 give us 2.8928 and 2 times 0 0.3333 will be 0 0.6666 when we add 0 0.896 to 2.8928 to 0 0.6666 we'll get 4.4554 times 1 sieve that's 1 third times 0 0.5 will give us 1 sieve 1 sieve times 4.4554 will be 0 0.7426 so they say correct with three significant figures. So we can say that the integral spanning from one to three of the function one all over the square root of one plus x squared ds will be equal to 0 0.743 correct to three significant figures. So this is uh, all about the same thing for one third rule. We'll solve one more example on this. So we we'll saw our last example on sin sin one third rule. But before we do that, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are here to. If you do this, it will make my YouTube channel grow more. And YouTube can re recommend my, my channel to other users. And this will make my channel grow more. And I can record more mathematical content for you. So you can pause the video and try solving this. After that, you compare your answers with mine. So now compare our answer. They say we should evaluate the integral spanning from 1 to 2 of the function e exponent s exponent 3 ds using sin sin one third rule with four vertices. So since the vertices are four and it's even, we can easily use sin sin one third rule. Now compare your answers with my. We need to find the interval of difference. So the h is the interval of difference. It's given as b minus a. All over n where the b is the highest limiting point and a is the lowest over n and n is the number of vertices 2 minus 1 that will becomes 1 over 4 and 1 divided by 4 is same as 0 0.25 so I don't know the interval of difference we construct a table values for s spanning from 1 to 2 and the interval of difference will be 0 0.25. So the values of x will be 1, then we'll go to 1.25. So that's 1 plus 0 0.25 will be 1.25. 1.25 plus 0 0.25 will give us 1.50. Then 1.50 plus 0 0.25 will be 1.75. Then 1.75 plus 0 0.25 will be 2.0 or 2. So if we substitute all the values of s into this function, e exponent s cube, 
the corresponding values are as follows. So what does sin sin for and tell rule is saying? Sin sin for and tell rule is saying that the integral of the function, that's our function 1 to 2, e exponent x squared dx will be equal to 1 third h, then y naught plus y n plus 4 times all the values of y in all positions. That's y1 plus y3 in the order. Then plus 2 times all the values of y in even position. That's y2 plus y4 in the order. I hope you get that. Remember this is our y0, y1, y2, y3, and this is our yn. So we can say this is equal to 1 third. Remember our h is 1 over 4 or 0 0.25. So I will use the 1 over 4. Then times our y naught, which is 2.7182 plus yn, which is 2980.9. Then plus 4 times y1, which is 7. 0506 plus y3 which is 212.59 then plus 2 times all the values of y in even position and the only one we have here is 29.224 i hope you get that so 1 third times 1 fourth will be 1 over 12 So when we add 7.0506 to 212.59, we get 219.6406. So when we multiply 4 by 219.6406, we get 878.5624. And we add 2983.6182. When we add 2.7182 plus 2980.9, we we'll get 2983.618. So when 2 also multiply 29.224, we get 58.448. So when we add all this, we we'll get 3920.6286. And when we multiply it by 1 over 12, we we'll get 326.7190.905. So we can say the integral spanning from 1 to 2 of the function e exponent x squared ds will be equal to 326.72 correct to two decimal places i hope you, you you get that you get that so please play over the video and i know you will get more understanding of this do well to check out my videos on cc 3a rule and trapezium rule on youtube until we meet again remember to subscribe like and share my videos. My name is Kepsi.